Hi, I'm Jeff Newman, and I work for The Locked Room in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, as a game master and virtual game host. I have been working for The Locked Room as a game master and virtual host since September of 2018, I think. So it's been about two years and change since I first got hired at The Locked Room, but that is the only place I've ever been a game master. And while I've had a love for escape rooms and puzzles and games and things like that for decades, I've only actually worked as a game master for about two years. Do I have a code name as a game master? Uh, Locked Room Jeff, I guess. I, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I have. I mean, I could, I could take a code name. I mean, that seems like a really cool thing to have for a game master. I don't know. Uh, Locked Room Jeff. We're gonna say Locked Room Jeff is my code name for the games that we facilitate online. Other than that, I'm just, I'm just Jeff. I'm just Jeff. Ooh, that could be my code name. What's the weirdest experience I've had as a game master? Um, <laughs> there's, <laughs> maybe not the weirdest, but the one that still kind of sticks in my mind the most vividly is we had a group come in to play one of our rooms that the, <laughs> the amount that we recommend for the room is uh, four, but they came in as a pair, as a couple, and they were super lovey-dovey and really happy to see each other, and they were canoodling and close and always kept touching and kissing and nuzzling and, like, very, very large amounts of PDA. And we put them in this room, and we said, like, are you sure you want to do this room? It's a little bit more difficult, especially for just two players. Are you sure this is something? Yeah, yeah, we'll be fine. Put us in there. It'll be okay. And every time we'd go in to offer them help, because they were a little behind, the second we would open the door, at least one of them would go, We're fine! We've got this! And their time ran out, we went in, we retrieved them, and they did not speak. They did not say anything, they did not talk to each other, they didn't touch each other, they didn't look at each other, they didn't smile, they didn't laugh, nothing. And when they came out, they said goodbye and walked out, and I looked at one of my other game masters, I'm like, I'm pretty sure we just caused them to break up. That was a broken up couple right there. They are now exes. They came in as a couple, and they are leaving apart. Uh, so that is probably, maybe not the weirdest, but the most memorable experience I think I've ever had working as a game master in an escape room. What is my favorite phrase to say while I'm running a game? Hmm. I think in the physical rooms that I facilitate with the locked room, I think my favorite one is when I open the door when someone calls for a hint, I'll just simply say, what are we working on? It's a nice, kind of low confrontational way to say, hey guys, I'm here to help you out. We want to have fun here. So what are you working on? What can I help you with? If it's a virtual room, <laughs> I think I think it's not so much that I have a catchphrase, but I definitely have kind of a very dry delivery to let people know what they're trying is a little bit ridiculous or a little bit silly, but I do it in a way that's kind of bizarre and different. Uh, for example, in one of our games, we have a water fountain that the player can interact with in the virtual space, and every time they search in the water fountain looking through the water to find something, I usually wind up delivering a line that's something like, you reach your hands into the water, and as you run your fingers through the cool, clear liquid, you find nothing here. But you have succeeded in making your hands wet. What is my must-have companion for running a game? Hmm. I would say it's, it's one of three things. It is either my noise-canceling headphones that I use to run my virtual rooms, because they shut out all the noise and the distractions from anywhere else outside the game. Two, if, especially if it's an earlier game, I need a strong cup of coffee to keep me alert and make sure that I am on the ball to handle any and all things that get thrown my way. And three, probably actually my, my microphone running my virtual games. It makes it clear, it makes it easy to understand, I can enunciate and everyone has a crystal clear idea of what I'm saying and there is no miscommunication. So those are kind of the three things that I need to make sure that my game is as top notch as it can be. Who are my favorite customers? Ooh, there's so many. I don't know if I can pick just one. We've had, I've, I've had so many awesome groups, especially with the virtual rooms that I've been hosting the last few months. For, I guess the one that comes to mind automatically is the group that nominated me for this from Ontario. You guys know who you are. If you see this, you know who you are. I am shouting out to you. Thank you so much. You guys are always awesome and it's always a pleasure to have you in there. I also have three sisters that are separated a world apart. Two are from Canada, one is from Sweden. They always beam in to play the new games with their friends and their partners and other family members and they are so much fun to have playing as well. But to be honest, I have had so many other groups that have come through that I see every time we release a new virtual room that is always just a thrill to have them back. And to be honest, they're the ones that make this job so much fun because they're here to have a good time. They want to have fun. They're laughing. They're enjoying each other's company. And to be honest, that's what makes it fun for me too, is knowing that 
you out there playing the game is also having a good time. If a customer asks for a hint, what do I do? I don't like to outright explain things blatantly. I like to kind of lead them down the path so they discover it on their own. Not only because I think it's more fun for the people playing the room, but also I think it's more rewarding when they, even with me giving them a hand, they figure it out themselves. So I don't necessarily point out the answer right away. I know a lot of game masters and a lot of rooms I have have done that, where they said, okay, here's what you got to do. I like to have a little more fun with it and say, okay, what if you try, here's this strange marking on this particular item or thing you found. What do you think that means? If you found this anywhere else in the room, and I, and I don't necessarily directly point them in the right direction, but I kind of take their hand and lead them to the solution themselves. Because like I say, I think that's much more rewarding for the players. They have a better time and they feel like they've actually accomplished something rather than just be told the answer. However, in some cases, all I really can do in some cases is just say, would you like to take a look at this thing again? Here's where you should be looking again and this is what you should find. Either way, I try and make sure that whoever is running the game with me and whatever hint I'm giving, it's something where they don't feel dumb or they don't feel like they've missed something obvious. Again, I want to make sure that they're having a good time and the experience they're having from start to finish is fun, enjoyable, and rewarding. So I try and make sure that even my hints are structured in that way to make sure they have that wonderful experience. I have played, a, I don't even know how many physical rooms at this point. I have played a whole bunch of virtual rooms. I do the escape rooms in boxes. I love them. And because of the other job I have, when I travel and I go to different cities, if I am there with enough people that I know, I will actively seek out escape rooms to play while I'm in a new city. And because of that, I have played escape rooms all across Canada. I'm hoping to do more eventually when I'm traveling to different places around the globe. And like I say, I am I am an escape room nut. I love them, I seek them out, I want to play all of them. And to be honest, I love giving that experience to our players as well. Whether it's a group that is just adding another escape room experience to their list, or a group or a player that is doing it for the very first time and has no idea what to expect, I want to make sure that they are having just as much fun as I do when I play the rooms as well. And to be honest, that's probably what I like the most about being a game master, is giving people that experience, especially for the first time, who may not even know what it's all about, but I want to make sure that when they are finished with the room, they have had as much fun as I do, and that they want to come back and play again. What is my favorite escape room I've ever played? Oh, that's a hard one. Uh, there's, there's been a few. I've actually played a lot of really good rooms. Is it tanky to say that one of my favorites is one of our own? Can I do that? You know what we'll do? We'll kind of do outside the locked room and then I'll talk about my other favorite with us as well. So I'd say one of my favorites that still stands out to this day is probably Spaceship with the Real Escape Canada in Winnipeg, Manitoba. It was a great room. It was difficult in the best way possible. There were elements that were scary, there were elements that were fun, there were elements that were surprising, there were, there were gameplay elements that I have yet to encounter in other rooms that I found really interesting and exciting. And from start to finish, the whole game was really, really well done. The Real Escape Canada also has another one of my favorites called The Abandoned Station. It was super fun. And again, there were some really interesting, unique puzzles and challenges in those rooms that I found really, really fun that I've yet to actually see in a lot of other rooms that I've played before or since. One of my favorites that is also within Company is one we've actually just released at one of our physical locations called The Price is Life. It is quirky, it's a weird theme that is so much fun and so bizarre and there's so many different elements from so many different things. There's game show elements, there's physical puzzle elements, there's codes and strange quirky narrations and the end goal is utterly fabulous and bizarre. And I got to play test it before it released it to the public and man, it was a blast. So yeah, I guess that is my favorite within company. One of my favorites all time, but it's awesome. So much fun. What do I enjoy the most about being a game master? Honestly, it's fun. It's, it's fun. Every day I get to meet new people and for a chunk of time, about an hour, I get to just have fun with them. We get to play a game, we get to laugh, we get to hang out, and we just get to enjoy our time together. And for that chunk of time, they don't have to worry about anything other than just having fun, stretching their brain, using their noodle to solve the puzzles and the clues and the challenges we have either in our virtual rooms or our physical locations. And to me, that makes it all worthwhile. At the end of the day or at the end of the game, when they say, man, that was a good time, that was so much fun, 
I'm glad we did this. That is what makes it worthwhile for me. I love just being able to meet new people and have fun with them and enjoy that experience together because it is so, so rewarding. Is there anything I'd like to say to the players of my rooms? Don't be afraid to speak up. Honestly, there are so many times where I've had somebody look me dead in the eye and say, I think it might be this, but man, that's, that, no, that's stupid. That can't be it. That can't be it. No, trust your gut. Stupid answers are usually the right ones. By all means, if you think it's dumb or stupid, don't let that stop you because I promise you, even if it's not the right answer, it will lead to the right one. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there and say what's on your mind and tell your team because you are all working together and you are all working towards the same goal. So there are no dumb answers. There are no stupid things to say. And I guess the flip side of that is as the team, if somebody is seeming a little shy about maybe saying what they might think is a dumb or a silly answer, encourage them to speak up. A lot of times, I can't tell you how many times I've run a game where one of the team members has said, and they've kind of just mumbled the correct answer to themselves because they were afraid to speak up because they think they would look stupid. Please, by all means, throw stuff out there. Say what's on your mind, try different things. And I promise you, I promise, 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 not only will it probably lead to a couple really interesting solutions that you didn't know were there, but it will also mean you have way more fun in the rooms. So yeah, speak up, don't be afraid to say things and just, Blurt out what you think the answers might be, even if you think they are completely ridiculous. That does it for me, everybody. My name is Jeff. I'm with The Locked Room in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Thank you all so, so much for the nomination for Game Master of the Year. It is so bizarre and wild and wonderful. I love it. So for those of you who nominated me, thank you so much. For those of you who voted for me, thank you so much. For those of you who watched the video and still didn't vote for me and voted for someone else, thank you also because I'm sure the Game Master you did vote for really appreciates it. And thank you for spending the time to get to know me with this quick little video. And hopefully someday I get to see you in a virtual room and get to spend time to know you better as well. Good luck, everybody. Enjoy your games and see you around.